OLED TVs are available on the market for some time now. There are many reviews out there, but I honestly cannot say that I have seen any long-term testing done with this new exciting technology. I wanted to change that, so in December 2014 I received LG's 55-inch EA980E OLED TV for long-term marathon testing. Reason? OLED TVs are great if you test them for a week or two, but what will happen after longer periods and with normal usage? People are talking about blue component of the OLED material that cannot keep up its luminance and should make picture look reddish or greenish over time. Also, what about image retention and burn-in? We know that it exists. In order to see what's going on, I placed LG's OLED TV in my living room and used it as any other TV that I've owned. I was watching all kinds of content, standard and high definition, internet video, Blu-rays, played a little bit of games and used built-in apps like YouTube. To avoid relying only on my eyes, I did a complete ISAF calibration on 18th of January this year and used calibrated Expert One presets since. OLED light, which is basically the same as backlight on LED LCD TVs, was most of the time at half of its maximum value, but sometimes I've increased it to 70%. Calibration was made for Rec. 709 color space. After around 750 working hours, on 2nd of October this year I've rechecked using Spectrocal's Kalman software how Expert One preset looks and here are the results. As you can see from the graphs, there were no big changes in picture characteristics. On white balance chart, we see that blue stimulus is reduced, but overall Delta E2000 errors are below value of 3. Delta E is a rough estimate of sum of errors in colors, with value below 3 considered not visible to the average human eye. Color gamut is the range of colors that a particular device can show. In this case, we see no significant change compared to the calibrated state, meaning that colors that are mastered on Blu-ray discs will be precisely displayed on the TV screen. If we check Delta E errors for colors, we see them below threshold of 3, with the biggest errors in blue. Same situation was measured in January, so again, no big differences in this regard as well. I also checked color gamut coverage since now I use Kalman 5 Ultimate for business version of the calibration software. LG's OLED TV can display 99% of Rec. 709 and 89% of DCI-P3 which is a standard used in digital theaters and which should come to our living rooms with the advent of UHD Blu-ray. Peak brightness when 18% of the screen is covered in white was 152.6 nits in January and 146 nits in October. This is a 5% decrease which cannot be seen with bare eyes. Just for comparison, I've tested one 39-inch Panasonic LED LCD TV two years ago and after nine months its brightness fell around 15%. In short, OLED does not show any concerning behavior in this regard. Black is still pure 0.00 nits and black level is set so that value of 16 is reference black. I still haven't properly tested Panasonic's first OLED TV, but I would say that performance is very similar, at least when compared to the OLED TV I'm using. Although I was using apps, listening to music with built-in media player, none of the static parts of the interface left any traces on the screen. Yet, I've received feedback from different stores and also some with my own eyes burnt in LG's logos and lower thirds of the news channels. So image retention and burning are possible. Still, for typical usage without constantly using OLED TV as a PC monitor, there should be no worries. So what is the conclusion of this analysis? After 10 months, LG's OLED TV did show small changes in picture characteristics, but they are still below threshold that would be visible to the human eye. Previously conducted marathon tests like this one did show even bigger differences, so for the time being, OLED technology seems to be on the safe side. Testing continues, as I will report again in January 2016, precisely one year after the initial calibration. Stay tuned!